Radical, episode 12. Ladies and gents, welcome back to Radical. I'm your host, Shane Hazel. Thank you for joining me. I am coming in hot today. Holy cow, there's a ton of stuff going on. I was watching over the weekend uh, with uh, Trump's Twitter feed. Obamagate's coming. General Flynn has had all of the charges dropped. I'm excited about those things. But I'll tell you right now, because I live in Georgia... And because people like Steve Dace, Steve Deese, I don't know, I guess it's Dace, want to talk about how Brian Kemp is now the poster child for reopening a state. Boy, my blood is just boiling right now. So a warning to you guys, maybe that have kids that listen to the show, I'm probably going to cuss. So from here on out. Get ready because the gloves are coming off, the brass knuckles are going on, and I'm about to hit some people in the face. Holy shit. What is going on in America right now with quote-unquote conservatives? What the fuck does that even mean anymore? You people have lost your damn minds in terms of who's acceptable, what the bar is, and 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 you know being a what a poster child is in, in this day and age of tyranny. Holy hell! Why am I so worked up? I'm going to lay out this case again today because I have people on a national media scale out there going out and talking about Brian Kemp like he's something great when in reality he's just a lesser maybe lesser tyrant that'll all be seen so ladies and gents here in Georgia uh, I've got I've got Steve D, D- so I'm just gonna I'm gonna I, I, I found this through the blaze And it popped up in my Twitter feed. And then I was like, I got to dive into this. I got to get Steve in his own words. And Steve, I'll tell you right now, man, I've, I've heard your show a couple times. I think a lot of times you knock it out of the park on some things, but I'll tell you right now, conservatives quote unquote out there. If you're just coming into radical or one of my old show, the rebellion, man, You guys don't have a defining characteristic or principle for what you believe in. You continue to support these F-rated constitutional voting, you know, quote unquote Republicans out there that are holding hands with the the damn Democrats who are communist socialists. And you guys are right there with them. Only you guys are fascist. And I don't use that term like the Antifa people use that term. I use that term as in the the correct term where government owns the means of production. And right now we're seeing that across the United States where people who have come out in terms of the executives, whether they're the mayors, whether they're the police chiefs, whether they're the governors and issued executive orders that aren't pursuant to the constitution. And so they are not withstanding. And so I wanted to find this clip of Steve just, just for myself. So I knew, you know, what I was really getting myself into. It's about five minutes long. I'm going to interrupt the shit out of him because right now I think he needs it. And then I'm going to point out over and over and over why he's wrong. This is the problem with not defining what you stand for through principle. This is the problem with supporting politicians over principles. Support, supporting your, I don't know, your party and your party's nominees and your, you know, if it's straight ticket balloting, like all of this crap. And I, and, and here's the thing is, I know Steve doesn't always do this, but to put this out there right now, I'll tell you, I, I hope Steve, if you're out there, if you ever hear this, if you ever listen to this, I'm sure after I point some of this stuff out, you might feel a little silly. I don't, I don't like to, I don't want to burn a bridge before I ever, you know, make an acquaintance because I I think you're probably a pretty good dude, but damn it. We have got to expect a lot more out of the people who are elected first and foremost. And that's only going to happen if people like yourself with a national voice and a national microphone out there are giving them hell every step of the way and not taking the gloves off and give them this like padded like hoorah speech so here's steve in his own words i've got a new baseline i know we're not even to the 2020 election yet 
but 2024 has started. It has. It ha- yes. It, it, there's no doubt it has yeah, started. It, it has. Yes. Um, and I've got a new baseline. All right. You have to be better than Brian Kemp or the answer is no. All right. First, I'm just going to stop. If this is a baseline. Yeah. You got to be better than Brian Kemp. I, I agree. Anybody could be better than Brian Kemp. Anybody. Anybody, anybody, anybody could be better than Brian Kemp. Are there a lot of people that are worse? Yeah, most of them are politicians who only care about one thing, and that's being elected so that they have power, right? I don't think most politicians out there, and I'm speaking as a Marine combat vet right now, I don't think most politicians, most office holders, most sheriffs, most of anybody who is in a, quote, leadership position, has any freaking clue how to handle emergencies. And that, in this moment, is not a luxury to, 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 to have. You have to have people in these places who understand shock, who understand trauma, who understand not making knee-jerk reaction and decisions, for God's sakes. God, if, if, if you, you, can, you can just tell... I can, and I don't like being like this, ladies and gents, but I swear to God, they are going to start a civil war if this, if the shit continues. It doesn't matter if we were friends. This isn't, I'm like Nick Nolte in 48 hours. We ain't partners, we ain't brothers, and we ain't friends, right? I thought I was good friends with Mike Huckabee too, but I didn't think he was the best candidate last time, so I didn't support him, all right? This is strictly business for me. And the business is, who's going to help me keep my way of life? That's the deal. That's the transaction I'm looking for. All right? And so I'm going to explain to our audience here why Brian Kemp is the new baseline for me. He's, he, he's, the, he's the ante you got to pay to even belly up to the table if you want my support. You got to be able to at least reach this threshold. This threshold, which I'm going to explain to you in a little while, is something a toddler could walk over maybe even crawl over it's that low not by steve's understanding of brian kemp but of my understanding of brian kemp living here being a a a georgia boy having grown up here having having sworn the same oath to uphold the constitution being a constitutional scholar like most other people haven't put the time into The bar is absolutely laying on the ground. Hell, there might be an indentation on the ground where it's laying. Let's take a look at Georgia, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. So first, some context. Georgia is more densely populated than Texas. It's also more densely populated than three of the primary virus hotspots, Washington, Louisiana, and Michigan. 16 days ago, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp became the national poster child for reopening, mainly out of harsh criticism. He was trashed as a death merchant by Democrat media. All right, this is where I'm going to stop. Brian Kemp got pressure from a lot of people, people like myself, who went out and put together the peaceful armies and did protests and then... Reopen Georgia, and I'm going to take a second to pause right here because Reopen Georgia still has not contacted me. I have tried contacting Melanie a couple times, and like I said before, this is where somebody who's a public person stops because now it looks like if I continue to contact them, I'm harassing, and I'm not going to do it. To have her on my show after she came up and said, you're not associated with us and I apologize. We're looking for, you know, liberty and and peace and our rights in constitutional government, but you're not associated with us. They still haven't reached out to do anything about it. God. Brian Kemp bowed down to that group, probably specifically. Of 24,000 people that was, I don't know, put together in in about a week that I pulled a bunch of people into because I thought that was going to be the group that fought, that came together and said, you will reopen the state. 
you will stop trespassing on our reserved rights. And because of the Ninth Amendment, we reserve all rights, all rights not enumerated in the Constitution. That means we have the right to travel, to conduct business, to work, to provide for our families, to play even. That was what I thought Reopen Georgia was going to be instead of a bunch of spineless, ballless flakes that go right along with conservatives so that now, as I probably suspected, they're doing damage control for their guy, Brian Kemp. Yeah, were there some Democrats and progressives, communists, socialists out there that were telling them, don't reopen the state? Of course there were. But I'll tell you right now, the largest voices, the ones that actually contribute to society, the ones that go out and bust their humps day in and day out, those people got together in a giant group and before that, the, the admins of that group decided to go down there they didn't talk to the group at all there was no poll there was no there there was there was no communication whatsoever they put together a group they used the numbers to compromise away the rights of the georgia citizens they said you reopen most of everything out there and we'll 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 back off we'll make sure that maybe you're reelected We'll make sure that we provide cover for you in the in your in 2022 when you're up for re-election. That is why Brian came out first and foremost and said, "Sure." Do you think it helped that he had part of the peaceful army behind him, people with all the boo gear and everything else? You're damn right it did. We were begging for peace, but we will have our rights. Was the message? That was growing before reopened Georgia, got everybody together and then shut it all down. He was undermined as reckless by President Trump on consecutive days. Well, the data is now in after a full 14 day viral incubation period as Brian Kemp, the Grim Reaper. All right. And I'm going to stop for a second. Brian Kemp is not accountable to Donald Trump. No governor is period. If, If governors were accountable to the executive of the United States, this would not be a constitutional republic. We wouldn't have the 10th Amendment. We would be subjects of the crown, of the District of Columbia. That is not what America is supposed to be. Steve, Saturday, Georgia had its fewest hospitalizations since April 8th and its lowest need for ventilators since the pandemic began. It still has almost 2000 of them available, just collecting moths. Now, recall the original rationale for the shutdowns was to save the healthcare system from being overrun. Now, imagine what would have happened had Brian Kemp never shut the state down through illegal unconstitutional a violation of his oath per article 6 section 3 a violation of article 6 section 2 of the constitution because it is not pursuant to the constitution imagine had he not shut us down we are talking now about millions of lives whose whose livelihoods have been destroyed because he he and a whole bunch of other people out there deemed some people unnecessary or non-essential in their words. Non-essential. Sounds like 1938 Germany to me. I'm not going to give anybody a, a high mark for defying D.C. That's your job. That's your job as a governor is to do what is in the Constitution of Georgia and the United States Supreme Court, and you absolutely annihilated that when you issued that executive order for people to shelter in place, and then again, for sheriffs to be able to contact people to break up and use force 
when you said, call me, Brian Kemp, call my office if you see people in groups of more than 10 that won't disperse. The Bill Gates IHME model that Fauci and Burks have enslaved this country to predicted on April 27th that Georgia shouldn't reopen until June 28th. It originally predicted back in March that Georgia was going to need 8,196 hospital beds on April 23rd. That's the day before Governor Kemp opened. The actual number of those hospitalized on that date was 4,154. And more than half of those were just in Fulton County. That's Atlanta. Georgia has 159 counties. The IHME model also originally predicted that April 21st would be Georgia's peak death day with 137 deaths from coronavirus on that day. 24 people actually ended up dying of COVID-19 that day instead. 50 people die of heart disease per day in Georgia every year, according to CDC. And again, Lest anyone continue using this as an excuse, the IHME model was factoring ideal social distancing achieved by May 31st into its original modeling. Kemp didn't even announce a shelter in place in Georgia until April 2nd, after IHME's original model was published. This virus in my opinion, is the defining political moment of this era. It's bigger than even 9-11. It has forced everyone to show their true colors and true motivations. For better or for worse, we now know where everyone really stands or doesn't. I don't know Brian Kemp. Here's what I do know. He and a few other governors had the stones to call BS on maybe the... No, Steve. They didn't have the stones to call bullshit. Had he had the stones to call bullshit, he would have done his homework first. He would have seen who the connections were. He would have seen who who was involved, for God's sakes. The NGOs, the CDC, the WHO, Fauci, Wuhan Labs. They would have done their homework. They would have talked to other people outside of the healthcare community. They would have not taken things that were said by the propaganda machines that are out there as truth, as the end all be all, as the one size fits all solution when we have 350 million people in this country. 350 million brains to work on this problem. To solve it so that a pandemic doesn't take over the country and cripple cripple it economically. That's not stones. That is timidness. That is weakness. That is fear that you will be blamed as an executive. Well, guess what? As the executive and a leader, you should be accepting the responsibility no matter what. And I dare say that Brian Kemp is not that man. He cowered. And he licked the boots of those tyrants that lied, that absolutely projected doom and gloom as if it was something that was turning 100% of everybody that it touched into zombies, and we were all going to die. That isn't brass. That isn't a backbone. Leaders... And I'm speaking as a combat vet again. Leaders trust their men to complete the mission. And then what they do to help them is remove every silly, little, stupid, insignificant obstacle that the brass puts in their way so that they can succeed. This isn't leadership. 
This isn't brass. This isn't a backbone. This is a fear-driven, intestinally weak, ballless decision. Worst management decision ever. And he did it with even the president of his own party throwing him under the bus Good. from the White Let House, it show for feeding both the frenzy. Of them. When looking for future prospects to represent us, I'm going to be looking first at who did what and when with this calamitous and moronic shutdown. Who needed prodding? Whose instincts told them to be skeptical? Who panicked and who didn't? Who was timid? Who was prudently bold? Because if you didn't stand up here, you can't be counted on to defend my way of life with the next crisis conjured up by the spirit of the age. I have no idea if Brian Kemp plans on running for president in 2024, but if he does, <sighs> when he comes to my native first to the nation caucus state, I'm definitely going to take the time to get to know him. Let me save you He's the some baseline. trouble. I didn't have to send him any calls, any texts. I don't even know the guy. I've never met him. There's plenty of us that don't did there, anything. Steve. Plenty of us All that I did. All I know is he and his team have been on the vanguard Oh. Of treating this with prudence instead of panic. Bullshit. And I'm going to tell you why. Right now, ladies and gents, Congress, the 116th Congress, has introduced H.R. 6666. What is H.R. 6666, Shane? It's a bill. To authorize the Secretary of Health and Human Services to award grants to eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing of COVID-19 and related activities such as contact tracing through mobile health units and, as necessary, at individuals' residence and for other purposes. There is a whole bunch of cosignees on this thing. Some that stick out to me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Miss Talib uh, Soto. And let's see. Who else is on here? Oh, do I see any? Oh, yep. Hastings is on there. Uh, who else do we have? Well, those are the ones. Brown sticks out. So anyway, this bill is to authorize the Secretary of Health and Human Services to award grants to eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing uh, for COVID-19 and related activities such as tracing through mobile health units. I wonder if mobile health units will be connected to a grid. I wonder if they'll be connected to these smart little devices with GPS tracking that's been turned on where everybody has a social score. I wonder if the most evil person alive would ever use that or abuse that to take out dissidents, to people who disobey. They have been doing this for a long time. They've been setting this up for a long, long time. When you look at the funding bill, this, this, the, the stimulus package that came out, it came out in January 24th of 2019 for 2019 and 2020 funding. You think we are just having this? No, this is orchestrated and conducted. And I'm telling you right now here in Georgia, there was a little slip a couple weeks ago and some people out there brought it to my attention when the uh, doctor who is at the right hand of uh, Brian Kemp, started talking about rolling out Google Trace here in Georgia. Why is this so god-awful, terrifying, and tyrannical? Well, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, acting through the Director of Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, Ladies and gents, the same damn CDC that doesn't have a clue on how it got the numbers that it had. The same CDC that pulled the 2003 COVID illegal per Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8 of the Constitution IP 
license on COVID that was deemed illegal in 2013 by the Supreme Court that then renewed it in 2014. That same CDC grants to the eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing for COVID-19 to trace and monitor the contacts of infected individuals and to support the quarantine of such contacts through mobile health units. They're coming to your house. As necessary, testing individuals and providing individuals with services related to testing and quarantine at their residence. You imagine one of these units rolling up to your house, snatching you, maybe your kids, or your wife or husband, maybe your father, maybe your father-in-law, maybe your mother-in-law, maybe your aunt, whoever lives with you grabbing you and taking you off for quote unquote treatment. In section B, this permiss- the permissible uses of funds, a grant recipient recipient under this section may use grant funds in so- support of the activities described in the subsection A to hire, train, and compensate these people to purchase their PPE gear. The priority under section C is in selecting grant recipients under this section. This is where they get into the states. This is where they say, here you go, states. Here's some money. Go out there and violate violate the rights of people, violate your oath of office, and all of it be damned because you know what? Our FBI, the same FBI that outed General Flynn, the same FBI that had Comey at its head, the same FBI that had Strzok and Page and the rest of these ass clowns up there, the same FBI is not going to investigate you for the crimes against your people, for violating their rights outright in sunlight for God's sakes. The applicants that agree in hiring individuals to carry out these activities funded under this section to hire residents of the area or community where activities will primarily occur with higher priority among applicants described in this paragraph given based on the percentage of individuals to be hired from such community. So the distribution secretaries, blah, 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 blah. This comes into grants for everybody. A federally qualified health care center, a school-based health clinic, a disproportionate share of hospitals, an academic medical center, a nonprofit organization, including any such faith-based, faith-based organization, F, an institution of higher education as defined in blah, 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 a high school, any other type of entity that is eh, determined by the secretary to be eligible. So anybody, basically the term emergency period has the meaning given to the term and section blah, blah, which is probably forever and indefinitely because we know We don't spend less money, we spend more. And then the term hotspot, meaning a geographic location where infection with the virus exceeds the national average, whatever they determine that to be, because we know the CDC's numbers are so damn accurate. The term medically undeserved community. Oh, so another type of place. A term, the term secretary means the secretary of health and human services. The authorization of appropriations to carry out this section. There are authorized to be appropriated one hundred billion with a B. Bravo. One hundred billion dollars for fiscal year twenty twenty and such sums as may be necessary for the fiscal year 2021 and the subsequent year during which the emergency period continues. This emergency period isn't going anywhere, people. This is, quote unquote, the new norm, unless you stand up and do something about it and educate people like Steve out there. This is incredible. This is happening in Georgia, ladies and gents. This, I, I, I put something out the other day. 
Let me scroll down here and find this little sucker. I've got to, I mean, geez, oh, Pete, like the, there's so much news and, and to be wasting time on this one, to, to, to have, the, the fact that we have to do this kind of crap. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ah, yes. What I'll call test, trace, treat. The ultimate tool of the empire, technocrats, and pure nam evil. 99.9 plus percent of people who contract COVID survive. Yet the aristocratic combination of tech, pharma, propaganda, and government crashed the economy using fear, manipulation, and division. Extraordinary powers were taken at the point of law enforcement guns encouraged by governors such as Governor Kemp with complete disregard for natural rights and their oath to the Constitution. Furthermore, they flat out categorize people and their families and their businesses as non-essential without flinching. The plan is to ultimately use force to test as many peaceful people as possible. Using tests that have already proven to be conveniently contaminated with COVID-19. Then they will use the test as cover to trace literally everyone. Obviously, they're already doing this. But now they can come out and, that's right, treat people with the mandatory government prescription. I'm sure they'll never abuse the extraordinary power against the disobedient counterculture that just wants to live in peace. $25 trillion buys an astronomical amount of evil. And that's why I always say I trust the sum of government to be far worse than the murderers and thieves that run it. Christ. And here we are with HR 6666. Ladies and gents, I don't like being worked up like this. I really, like, I'm a pretty happy, joyful guy when I'm not paying attention to this kind of crap. But because I've got kids and because I enjoy liberty, I think it's worth knowing about. I don't watch sports. I don't have time to dedicate to baseball or fantasy football or any of those other really fun, cool things that I used to enjoy because this is more important. And I'm glad more people are listening now because none of those distractions are going on. The bread and circuses have been curtailed. You remember what I said about grants? Per the Georgia Forsyth County News, Georgia is to add 1,000 staff to the new online tool to boost contact tracing. That's right, people. They are going to take that government money from the Fed and they are going to apply it. And now, when the economy is suffering because of a disease that doesn't kill most People even comes in contact. I say most 99.9%. I did the math the other day. If you break it down, even with the padded numbers of 70,000 people, you get down to somewhere around 17,000 a month. I think that's somewhere, give or take, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, it's somewhere around 250,000. Right? 250,000. Are we going to hit that number this year? I sincerely doubt it. I will take that bet. Any day of the week, I'll take that bet. We are not going to hit that number. Because I think the CDC is trying to answer now for how they got those inflated numbers when the, we were blaming, as the United States, we were blaming everybody else for the numbers that they were, were, were quote-unquote, not reporting. Meanwhile, here in America, we were trying to inflate numbers to drive fear and hysteria. And now, Governor Kemp, the poster child now for, I don't know, the conservatives in reopening states, according to Steve, is going to take that money and hire a thousand new people to trace you. 
What could go what could go wrong? What could go wrong? I'll tell you right now, ladies and gents. I also told you you need to contact your sheriffs. I contacted mine. I had a really nice discussion. And thank you, Frank Reynolds, here in Cherokee County for calling me back. Frank understands I'm a pusher for liberty now. And I think we have a really good understanding. We had a we had a good talk about this HR 6666. He said, what do you think this looks like? And I said, man, I, I think this looks like exactly what I've explained to you guys. I think it looks like an avenue for the government to come in here and start talking and testing and tracing and violating the rights of people. And in the worst hands, I think it looks like a tool to remove them from society. He tended to agree. I wish I had it in writing. And maybe I'll ask him for it here shortly. But this is where your sheriff is going to be instrumental. This is where your sheriff needs to be able to stand up before a crowd of people and make the public statement that I will deputize every man, woman, and child in my county. And if you come in here as federal agents or bureaucrats thinking that you are going to violate their rights to be secure in their person, property, and effects, to take their guns, to limit their peaceful assembly, to restrict them from religious services, to treat them with inhumanity and torture them. You got another thing coming because this population in this county is well-armed and they reserve every right to preserve their life, liberty, and property. And I will back them up every chance I get. And I will bring the full weight of my force in the sheriff's department to bear on you. Where are those guys at? One out in Seattle, one brave cop out there who I think was out of the 2nd Ranger Battalion, Mr. Anderson, got fired for saying something like that to the rest of the cops out there this week. The good news doesn't stop with Brian Kemp just doing what he's done so far and what he's doing now, Steve. No, 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 no. One hour ago here on Tuesday evening, Governor Brian Kemp came out and extended the emergency here. We are not back at work. We are not back at full strength. Until 11.59 p.m. on May 31st, 2020, bars, nightclubs, live performance venues, and operators of amusement park rides remain closed unless extended. This is Executive Order 512-2002. Live performance venues, bars, nightclubs, and operators of amusement park rides must remain closed through May 31st. It will enhance health outcomes and give us opportunity to prepare for safe reopening in the near future. Bullshit. You can be at Lowe's and Home Depot. You can be at the liquor store. You can be at all these ridiculous places. But now you can't go out to bars. You can't go out to knife clubs. You can't go to live performances. You can't go see a comedian. You can't go to an amusement park. This is the very definition of tyranny. Where are the people from reopen Georgia and the rest of the state? Where are the three percenters? Where is every advocate for rights? Georgia Carey. Where are you at? I am sick and tired of these people falling all over themselves and their silly little groups with no principle whatsoever. They talk a big talk, but when it's time to get out there and really get down to it, you're seeing exactly who people are in this time and age. I agree with you, Steve. There are some people who are standing and there are some people who think they're standing and there are those people who are absolutely licking the soles 
of the boots of what will be known in American history as the biggest tyrants this country has ever seen. And Governor Kemp, he's just less, quote unquote, of a tyrant. I don't know about you, but anybody who's got their boot on the neck of a peaceful human being for wanting to, I don't know, serve their patrons in their neighborhood a couple beers, maybe a whiskey after this whole ordeal. Maybe go out and dance as young people who are not within the demographic of people who are getting sick. Shake off some of that, you know, that energy you have when you're that age to go out to meet somebody, to go to live performances, to hear somebody new play a song, play the guitar, tell a story. To take your kids to places like Six Flags. And let them love being young and screaming their heads off as they accelerate and feel the thrill of life after being cooked up, stripped away from their friends, not knowing how to make heads or tails of the situation that we're in while their parents talk about these crazy times we're living in at the dinner table. What a poster child. What a bar. I am absolutely, reprehensibly, gut-wrenched at what America has come to accept. I'll tell you what. I've got people blowing my phone up right now. And I think what it's got to do with is this order. I don't know. Is there, is there a group out there who will go forth and demand the rights of their fellow Georgians, Americans, be reinstated right now? Because I'll tell you what, the government's not going to do it. How many times have they moved the goalposts now? How many times have they moved it? The state of emergency went from somewhere, I want to say, what, what is it, May 1st, where we were, the end of, we were at the end of April the first time, and then it was the beginning of May, and then it was May 15th, and now it's May 31st. The goalposts continue to move and continue to move and continue to move. And while they're moving the goalpost, they're coming in behind it with broad, sweeping, unconstitutional, and tyrannically dangerous, backed by the force of guns, technology, agents, bureaucrats, judges, and prisons. This is not America. The men and women that sacrificed for this nation to become what it was for about 10 years anyway. How ashamed they would be. And rightfully so. To watch your brothers and sisters and cousins and uncles and kids suffer at the, the hands of a tyrant and the redcoats 
It makes no difference what colors they're wearing. It's people in power pointing guns at peaceful people who are trying to live their lives. When will we become radical enough? When will we have had enough to stand up and say no more? Grab your rifles, men and women. Follow me. I am going to the Capitol. Justin Amash, we are begging you for peace. Follow me. We will have our rights one way or another. Follow me. Does America have it in him? Georgia, do you have it in you? Because I guarantee you, I do. And I don't know how much longer it's going to stay inside me. (sighs) Man. Not the show I expected tonight, ladies and gents. Saw that post from Steve and he he touched a nerve and as all that was going on and the goalposts were being moved again by the poster child bar setting Brian Kemp. Boy, sparks went off inside of me that I don't think have gone off since 9-11. It's time to get real. It's time to do something. It's time to get radical, ladies and gents. You can either, like I've said before, you can take liberty or have it taken from you, but somebody's always taking liberty. Always, always, always. It's time to take it back. It is long past time. Which way are we going? That's up to you. You're going to have to get off your ass and do something about it, though. One man can talk. One man can lead, but it takes an army of people who are fed up, who will stand for their peaceful neighbors. I don't care if they are bartenders. I was a bartender at one point in my life. I don't care if they are the operators of nightclubs. I don't care if they run the Georgia Scream Machine, down at Six Flags. I'm here to stand for him. I hope you'll join me. My name's Shane Hazel. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope it's been educational. I hope you share the hell out of it. It's time. But this has been Radical, ladies and gents. I am all about growing passion people so that genius is ignited and we lift the human condition. I want to do it through peace. And we have to have peace and liberty to do it. Somebody's got to secure those things first. Until next time, this has been Radical. I love you. I need you. Peace. Um, don't hurt people and don't take their stuff.